The government now saying the very chemicals BP has been using to clean up the oil may be causing more damage. Matt Gutman is in the Gulf again tonight. Matt. Good evening, Diane. And BP and government officials now have been telling us for a month that they are pumping up that 5,000 gallons of oil have been leaking and they say that the chemical they've been using to clean up that mess is actually safe. Tonight we learned that is simply not true. The first live video of the gushing pipeline clearly shows a tremendous amount of oil still leaking into the Gulf. Today, BP said it's siphoning 5,000 barrels a day. That was the total amount BP and the government long estimated had been leaking. Numerous experts today say it's clear those numbers fell far short. Now we're putting the range uh, up near 40,000 to 100,000 barrels a day. These videos stand as a scalding, blistering indictment of BP's inattention to the scope and size of the greatest environmental catastrophe in the history of the United States. This on the same day the EPA announced that the chemicals BP is using to disperse the oil are too dangerous and must be discontinued. BP has already dumped 700,000 gallons of the dispersant called Corexit from the sky and injected it directly into the sea. A startling about face after weeks of assurances that it was safe. Well, chemical dispersants are really the essentially like soap suds. We're using the pre-approved dispersants. This dispersant breaks it up and it will take care of itself. How poisonous is it? Any living organism that contacts this stuff, particularly the mixture of dispersant and oil, as at significant risk of acute mortality that's dying quickly or sublethal chronic injury that might take uh, weeks if not months if not years to manifest. BP said it used the chemical because it was the only one in large enough supply. Dispersants do break down the oil into tiny droplets. What's left sinks into the water column and is consumed by bacteria. Some dispersants are safe. Corexit is not. That was discovered 20 years ago in Alaska when animals were found dead, traces of Corexit in their system years later. In fact, EPA testing released today indicates that where dispersants had been used, 25% of all organisms living at 500 feet below the surface died. Good evening from New York. One month after the Deepwater Horizon oil rig sank into the Gulf of Mexico, environmental scientists testified to Congress that the use of dispersants, the chemicals that break up oil on the surface and underwater, does nothing except reduce the oil's visibility. In other words, it doesn't clean pollution, it just hides evidence. In our fifth story tonight, 81 days in, with BP still using dispersants, the first glimmer of the price that will be paid, 20%. One out of five cleanup workers working offshore have been exposed to potentially hazardous levels of a toxic chemical found in those dispersants. Almost immediately, BP began using dispersants that were more toxic than others approved for this use. Dispersants it bought from a company with ties to Exxon and BP. Dispersants it used even after the EPA told it not to. Even after environmentalists testified to Congress that dispersants make it harder to remove the oil from the water and seem to serve primarily to hide it from from the public. It would seem that you would want it as thick and as concentrated as possible to deal with it right there, instead of circling it with numerous booms that are made for um, ocean wave conditions. We seem to be saying we're going to take this concentrated oil, we're going to dissolve it. So we have no ability to touch it or deal with it. For the most part, we won't see it. It's an out of sight, out of mind strategy only. It's a PR stunt to dissolve this oil with dispersants. It's just to get it away from the cameras on the shoreline. But yet something even more dangerous might be taking place here, here. under the ocean. Absolutely. That what you're saying? BP has poured hundreds of thousands of gallons of it into the Gulf, not only by air, but underwater. That, a process not only unprecedented, but untested. Now, Greenwire reports that BP has released, released monitoring data from as recently as June 29th, results of testing its cleanup workers and finding that 20% of offshore workers and 15% of nearshore workers had 10 parts per million of the dispersant solvent called 2-butoxyethanol, twice the toxicity limit of 5 parts per million dictated by the CDC's National Institute for Occupational Health and Safety. More than 47,000 people are working to clean up the spill right now and because one way to get exposed to 2-butoxyethanol is to breathe it. I just want to make one observation, um, which I'll be going into in the questions, and that is with respect to the use of chemical dispersants. 
We are treating chemicals with chemicals which don't actually remove or clean up the oil. They simply shift them to another part of the ecosystem while increasing the toxins in the Gulf, harming marine life, contaminating the water column, and threatening human life. And there is no scientific evidence that dispersants can be effective in an oil spill of this magnitude. But these chemicals make it harder to track how much oil is there and where it's going, and thus to determine liability. They are good for public relations, but nobody can guarantee they are safe. Already we're hearing of people getting sick because of the use of these chemicals. In fact, there's already anecdotal evidence that people are getting sick from the mixture of oil and toxic dispersants. We are basically airdropping this toxic stuff all over the Gulf. It reminds me of Agent Orange, and I'm greatly concerned that during this cleanup, we are conducting an uncontrolled experiment with all the marine and human life in the Gulf Coast region, and a, an uncontrolled experiment that could result in thousands and thousands of people getting sick or dying as a result of the cleanup, not of the original disaster. And I'll be going into questions on that during the uh, question period. And I hope that we can uh, prevent a repetition of some of the uh, uh, disasters that we've had before. This disaster is unprecedented in scope as it is. And I fear we're just going to make it worse.